What is going on everybody, it's Stas here, welcome back to another video. So in this video we're going to be doing an overall market update, looking at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ, and we're also going to talk about two trades that I made today on the 11th of December in 2018. But before we do talk about those topics, for all you new viewers out there, my name is Stas, and I make videos dealing with swing trading, day trading, long term investing, and my personal philosophies and strategies when it it comes down to investing and trading in the stock market. So for those of you guys that want to learn more about that, feel free to drop a like, leave a comment and subscribe and follow me on Instagram as well as on Twitter and join our Discord group chat as well as our Facebook group. All of those are linked down below in the description box. And if you guys want to be a part of a very helpful community, join that Discord group chat guys. We have about 330 people in there talking about stocks, trading, investing, news, you know, strategies and just networking with each other on a day-to-day -day basis and it's been very helpful guys I love the way that this community has really grown to you know just help each other become the best possible traders and investors possible so again if you guys want to join those communities they're all linked down below in the description box I'll see you guys in there and let's get started with today's video so just like the market has been over the past couple of weeks, today was pretty volatile as well. So let's just take a look at the three major indexes like we do in every single video, starting out with the Dow Jones. So, you know, in terms of me saying it was pretty volatile today, you know, we opened up about 300 points, about 350 points in the green in terms of the Dow Jones. And, you know, we can see that right here. We closed at about 20 24,400 yesterday. We opened up about 350 points in the green. You can see it right there under the percent. We were up about 1.41% in the Dow Jones when the when the market opened. So that was a pretty good sign, guys. And you know, it was a good sign from yesterday because we did end off on a very solid uptrend yesterday. But you know, we noticed that from this opening point, it was straight downtrend all the way down from $24,800, guys, pretty much all the way down to about $24,000. $235. So yet again, another 500 plus point swing in the Dow Jones. And this, this index guys has been doing this pretty much every single day. It feels like over the past couple of weeks, I know that's a little bit exaggerated. It probably hasn't done that every single day, but I can guarantee you that 80% of the past, you know, two trading weeks, I would say, you know, we've had 500 points swing in the Dow and, you know, We've had ridiculous swings all across the major indexes. So this really didn't catch me by surprise. So the fact that we opened up here and I noticed that it was pushing down in price early on in the market, this really dictated what I traded today. And again, we're going to talk about that in a little bit. So stay tuned for that if you guys want to know what I was able to trade today. If you guys are in the group chat, you probably already know what I did trade today. And a bunch of other people did, 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 did very well actually with this ETF. So, you know, we pretty much opened up 350 points, you know, downtrended from there, found the bottom at about 2 p.m. with two minutes or two hours left in the overall market. And then we popped up, ended up closing the day minus $53, down about 0.2%. So in terms of, you know, yesterday's close to now, we only were, you know, down 0.2%, down 53 points, and, you know, pretty much closing the day on a break-even note. But the fact that we opened up plus 400 and we downtrended for the for most of the day, you know, that opened up some pretty good opportunities that I and a bunch of other people, like I said, in the group were able to capitalize on. So that is what I'm looking at in terms of the Dow Jones. But if we look a little bit on this further picture, guys, like I've been talking about, this e uh this this, uh, what's it called? This index is trading in this, uh, you know, downwards trending channel. Officially, it's trading in this channel, guys, since we were able to break this $24,500 support, which I talked about in yesterday's video when we did break it to make a lower low, which was the necessary move for this, you know, downwards trending pattern to continue and for it to play out in this channel that we're looking at. So I wouldn't be surprised, guys, if we did push down 
down a little bit tomorrow. We're heading into, you know, uh, you know, later on in this week towards the bottom of this channel. And from there, if we bounce back up towards this 50 simple moving average, which is, you know, which has been a resistance in the past. We notice it here. We notice it here. So, you know, if we did push down maybe to the low 24,000 range, probably like 24,000 even, and then started to push back up, you know, I wouldn't be too surprised in terms of the Dow Jones. Now that we got a good understanding of that, let's take a look at the S&P, guys. The S&P is one that's trading in a more horizontal pattern, and I've been talking about this in every single video. The Dow Jones is more, uh, you know, if we if we look at that chart that we just saw, it's making more lower lows, you know, lower highs than the S&P. You know, the S&P has pretty much been trading between this 2630 support and this uh 2800 ish uh, resistance points so this one's more in a horizontal pattern and you know the fact that we were able to be flat today pretty much only down 94 cents on the close you know this support level is still valid from what I can draw out out of these technicals so if we take a look at the one day to see what we opened up you know we opened up about 1.5 percent you know 1.2 percent in the green from yesterday's close up about 32 uh, points here and and, you know, we notice it was really flat, you know, pretty much up until one hour into the market. And then we saw that big break below this support. And again, this is where I was trading that magical ETF that I trade all the time. And I'm sure all you guys know what I ended up trading today. But the fact that we broke this really gave me further, uh, further confirmation to trade what I did end up trading. So S&P guys, on a, on, a, on a broader perspective, we are holding that support. So keep an eye here. If we're able to reverse and start to push up, that could be a good indication to play some large cap stocks, potentially some market ETFs that go up with the overall market like TQQQ, uh, you know, QQQ. Those are two good ones that we've been trading, uh, you know, a good amount recently when the market was in rebound mode, when the market has been pushing up in price. And, you know, it hasn't been much recently, guys, but we can see there is opportunity to play large caps and those uh, you know market ETFs that go up in price when the overall markets are going up in price but we just have to time it correctly and you know pretty much hop into the opportunities that the overall markets are giving us judging off of the technicals that we do see here on the S&P the Dow and the Nasdaq so S&P pretty much flat on the close. Uh, you know, NASDAQ today, Apple was actually shooting up in price. I think it was in the 170s today, which held the, held the NASDAQ in the green for a little bit. But, you know, as Apple started to sell off, you know, I think a bunch of other tech stocks were selling off as well. You know, the NASDAQ was pushing down in the red. And we can see based off this 180 chart, guys, there's a clear resistance under this 180 simple moving average. And I've been talking about this in a lot of my previous videos and you know we've gotten rejected there once again was this actually today yeah it was today uh actually no these are the futures guys actually i keep forgetting that these are the futures so if we can see here when we did get rejected the time correlation with uh what we can see in these nasdaq futures this was at about 5 a.m so at 5 a.m we did get rejected there and we closed the day at about 35 dollars in the red down about 0.5 percent but you know overall what this is telling us guys is that you know we held above that support at 6500 very critical support there there for the NASDAQ, but unfortunately we got rejected by that 180 simple moving average. So I wouldn't be surprised if we do end up breaking the support in the next coming trading days, especially with you know the market being in the state that it is, a bunch of uncertainty. And again, I talk about this in every single video, but remember, we do get new viewers every single day on this channel. But you know, when the market there when there's a bunch of uncertainty in the market, the stock market hates that right with all the the china trade war the tariffs the interest rates all these different things right with the potential economic slowdown growth stocks closing i'm sure you guys saw the yield curve I'm, i'll make a, i'll potentially make a video on that the yield curve is slowly starting to invert, which a lot of people think is a recession indicator, right? People have used this in the past. Uh, you know, a bunch of, all, you know, all these doubts, all these cloudy 
things that are in the stock market right now is really causing a bunch of uncertainty, which is why I personally think, guys, there's going to be further downside, right? I wouldn't be surprised if we do break the support in the NASDAQ, we break 24,000 in the Dow. I honestly would not be surprised. So, you know, that's why I'm, I'm, I'm just waiting for opportunities to open up to me and I'm being very patient with my trades and I'm really analyzing the overall markets before every trading day, you know, every night, pre-market hours just to really decide what I'm going to be trading that day because the overall markets really affect you know ETFs and stocks and inverse ETFs that we trade and finding that correlation is super super important so those are the three indexes guys again I do this every single video and I really hope it does help you guys out because it does help me out when I when deciding what I want to trade but uh you know let's talk about what I traded today and I'm sure you guys can guess it. If you're in the group chat, like I said, you already know this. But it was TVIX, ticker symbol TVIX. And this is one that I traded yesterday. And I forget how much percent I made on it. I believe it was 3% or 4% on my trade yesterday. But today, guys, I ended up trading it twice, in and out. And I made a total of 7%. So today, guys, I had a pretty, pretty good day, honestly. Pretty, pretty good day. This is a lot, you know, this is a pretty decent amount above my daily goal. So the fact that I hit 7% with my daily goal being about 3, 4, 5% per day, I'm very ecstatic with that. So I'm going to show you guys exactly where I ended up trading TVIX. And, you know, beautiful pattern here, guys. Just take a look. It went from 45 all or 48 rather, all the way up to $55 today. That was a plus 10% move, you know, very solid move in terms of uh, TVIX. But let's take a look at this further chart so we can understand why I saw value in this one uh, from the get-go, right? So we noticed yesterday, again, very similar pattern as today, straight uptrend for the for the uh, you know first half of the day, followed by that really big sell-off. But yesterday we opened up, you know, at about $51 and shot to almost $60, right? And when we pulled back all the way to here, guys, what did that do? That opened up a margin of profit for us traders to potentially capitalize on, right? That opened up 20% margin from 48. Uh, you know, to 58, right? When it fell from 58, 49, down to 48, big, big margin was opened, which initially opened my eyes up to this because again, you know, we saw the markets have a healthy, you know, healthy comeback yesterday in the latter half of the uh, of the day, right? And the fact that the markets have been extremely volatile, they've been red, you know, a lot of the days, you know, since we did have a push up yesterday, let, let's just take a look again really quickly, guys, so you guys get an understanding here. Since we did have a push up here, that put it at the top of the channel, right? That put the S&P at the top of this channel or this resistance point that we can see here drawn out by this uh, trend line here. And, you know, I was waiting honestly, I was waiting for that rejection zone uh, to happen right up, up here because again, we opened up green, very strong, 350 point green day to uh, actually, no, this is the uh, the S&P, but the Dow was up 350. This one was up like 35 points, up 1.2%. And the fact that we were up strong like that and we were seeing consolidation, uh, you know, I was just waiting for that break under the, the support, which was right around here. And that's exactly what ended up happening. We ended up getting rejected here and started the move down, which really ended up giving me the opportunity to trade, uh, you know, TV. TVIX and I initially got into TVIX. Uh, let me show you guys here initially. So <clears throat> again, I post all my trades in the uh, group chat. I always talk live about what I'm trading and. Uh, you know, in terms of TVIX, we opened up again, like I said, $48, had this strong push. I believe I got in initially at about $50.27. This was my first trade. I made 2% on this one, actually. I got in $50.27, then I ended up selling off at about $51.29. So if we can see up to $51.29, guys, we can see that is about a 2% move on the dot, actually, right? That's actually like exactly 2%. So that was my first move. I got in here on this consolidation point. We ended up bouncing, and, and I ended up just selling off here at 2% at the top of this, uh, you know, at this new resistance point that was set. And then we ended up pulling back here. And then once I started to see some more consolidation right around here, guys, and then we started to push back up. I actually jumped back into TVIX at about $51, and I believe 39 or 49 cents. I forget uh, what the exact price was but it was around here 
at about uh, once we pretty much broke above this uh, resistance and we started to keep going up, I entered a position here, ended up adding more around, I believe, actually no, I waited for the pullback, ended up adding more probably around like 51.85. Then I actually ended up taking my profits at about $54. I believe it was around $54 and 10 cents. So my average cost on this, on this uh, second go around on TVIX was at about $51.70 roughly, right? And then up, up to about 54.10 roughly where I sold, that gave me about a 4.6 to about 4.75, close to a 5% profit on this second trade of TVIX. So 5% plus 2%, roughly about 6.75 to 7% today on the day in terms of my trading. So again, ecstatic about that because my daily goal, 3 to 5%. And you know, once I hit that, I always talk about this in my videos, once I hit that goal, I stopped trading for the day because for me, guys, consistency when trading is absolutely key. Once I hit my daily goal, which I would recommend you guys set a daily goal, whether that be a dollar amount, if you guys want to make a hundred dollars a day, or whether that be, you know, a, a, a percentage amount, you guys want to grow your account 2% a day, set a goal, right? Set a daily goal, set a weekly goal, set a monthly goal, and try to stick to those goals. Once you hit those goals, guys, you know, stop trading for the day to avoid over trading because over trading is a, something that a bunch of people get caught up in. You know, they make 5% on a trade. They get a little bit greedy. You know, they already hit their daily goal with that 5%. They get a little bit greedy and they want to make some more money. And then they end up giving back that money in the stock market a lot of the times, meaning that that second trade, that third trade, that fourth trade, that fourth trade that they take, they end up losing money. And then they end up, you know, losing that initial 5% that they already gained, that they already hit their daily goal on. And, you know, it's just a vicious cycle because, you know, at that point, you know, like I say all the time, trading is a psychological, emotional game. At that point, guys, you know, you already hit your 5%. You take a loss and let's say you're back down to 2%, your mind's going to tell you, okay, take another trade, take another trade to try and get that money back. And then you could end up even further in the red and even lose all that profit at that point. So just be very, very careful with that guys. Just set your goals, whether that be 1% a day, 0.5% a day. I don't care what it is. Just set your goals. 2-3%, whatever that may be, $100, $50, $25, just set your goals, right? Once you hit those goals, stop trading for the day. Focus on that consistency. Focus on that growth. And that is how you're going to become successful, guys. Literally, this is what I personally do. A lot of people out there in the group do that. A lot of other traders you know, around the world do that. And it really, really does work. Just be confident, you know, stick to your goals and, uh, you know, that's pretty much it. Don't overtrade. That's the whole that's the whole idea here, guys. So, you know, TVIX was my main money maker today. Uh, you know, a bunch of other people were trading you guys. I personally did not trade you guys today. Um, you know, this one did have a pretty decent move to the upside. Excuse me, but then it actually ended up going down even more. So by that I mean, you know, a bunch of people were watching it around here at the 139 level. You know, we popped up the 146, so there was potential there, but you know, overall on the day, you guys was down about 8.6 seven percent so this one guys it's, it's finally going down in price honestly you know this is something that has been flying up recently it's been going up like crazy and you know it's been making lower lows but it's also been making higher highs or uh, 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 higher lows rather so it's been making lower highs and higher lows putting it in this wedge pattern that we see here so let me just quickly you know erase this strong set really quickly because there's a lot of stuff going on here but let me just erase that and show you guys what i'm talking about so take a look at this guys you know it's making lower highs right but it's also making you know, higher lows, which is like really weird, right? Putting it in that wedge. So at this point, guys, we're at the support level of this wedge. So tomorrow, be very cautious about what this is going to do. Is it going to break below this and then continue this downtrend, which would be a break of pattern, right? Or, you know, or is it going to pop up and start to, you know, trend closer to this 
resistance point, which would be a continuation of pattern, which could potentially happen in my personal opinion. So if that does happen, guys, I would love to trade you guys from potentially 140 back up to the mid 150s. I do see a lot of potential in this particular ETF. 100% guys, if it does confirm this reversal right here, I'm probably going to be trading this one tomorrow. But again, being patient, waiting for those opportunities is what makes you a successful trader or at least one of the first steps to becoming a successful trader. So I'm going to wait for my opportunity, guys, and I'm going to see whether or not you know it's going to be a good one in terms of you guys tomorrow, pre-market hours. Of course, we're going to have to be watching, you know, the natural gas futures to really see what's going on there. So another one that I'm being super patient with is JDST. A bunch of people have been trading JDST or are in JDST. And we've been talking about this one on the channel the past couple of videos. I've honestly haven't been trading this one too much over the past couple of months, but I do see some potential in it right here since it is holding above this support at about $68. Now, all we want to see guys before taking a position here is we want to C slash GC, which is the future that JDST trades based upon, and pretty much how this works. Whenever slash GC is going down in price, that's when JDST is going up in price. So, what I ideally want to see here, guys, is a break below the 50 SMA on slash GC here on the 184 hour chart. We already had a double top here, which is a very good sign of a potential reversal. Double top meaning we topped at about 1255, had trouble getting above there again at about 12.55 and now we're pushing below you know about to break below this support we're already breaking below this support at about 12.50 12.48 roughly right around there so the fact that we're breaking below that support if we do see a move downwards here and break this 50 sma at about the 12.45 mark in my personal opinion that's going to be a good sign to at least trade JDST for tomorrow and potentially for a couple of days, you know, as a swing trade. Because like I said, guys, these inverse ETFs, they're really meant for day trading, but you can get away with swinging them for a day, two days, three days, four days. I've personally done this a bunch in the past, but you know, again, remember that they're only meant for day trading, but you can get away with a little bit, you know, a little, little swing trade, maybe a couple days here and there. But you know, if you're holding it more than a week, two weeks, three weeks, that is not a good good uh, good idea at all, in my personal opinion, because these are not meant for long term investments. These are really just meant for you know intraday swing trade or uh, intra week swing trading. You know intraday quick in and out day trading because again they're leveraged ETFs. They move very quickly. They're meant to be really volatile for the day traders uh, to capitalize on, right? So JDST guys, very very good in my personal opinion. Very attractive looking. As of right now, you know, you guys is another one I'm watching. Obviously, we just talked about that one. Uh, you know, I'm potentially looking to trade gush guys. Remember in yesterday's video, what I was talking about, the fact that we push to a lower low on XOP is a very good sign because every time we push to a low, we end up curling back up, shooting to that 50 SMA, then getting rejected. So if this continues this pattern, guys, we're going to potentially be able to play Gush on a bounce back play. So we did, uh, Gush actually did run, I think it ran to the 13s today, if I'm not mistaken. Let me just take a look very quickly, guys. It opened up at the 13. So if you were able to overnight swing this one, for those of you guys that did, I'm not sure if anyone did, but you could have closed at a 10% uh, upswing from yesterday's low at about $12. So, you know, I am looking at Gush, guys, because again, XOP is pushed to a low, and now we can potentially rebound back up to that 50 SMA. Am I saying it's going to happen tomorrow? I don't know. No one really knows that, but just keep an eye on this. If it starts to consolidate and curl back up, that could be a good indication to go on a little day trade on Gush or a potential one, two, three day swing trade in my personal opinion. So Gush, uh, you know, Drip, those that duo, I'm always watching those. I'm very actively trading those, you know, 
you guys, D guys, and you know JDST and J Nug are three that I'm very watching, watching very closely as of right now. So besides those ETF combos, I'm obviously going to be watching what I've been trading pretty much every single day, and those are the market ETFs. If you guys want to make your own watch list with these ETFs, I highly advise it because when the market's super volatile like it has been, these are actually very good plays like TVIX, like I've been talking about. I've been trading this one pretty much every single day, just waiting for the market to get rejected and start selling off. That's been my indication to trade TVIX, right? And when we see a pushback up in the market, you know, TQQ has been a very fantastic play. So keeping an eye on these is a very good idea in my personal opinion, guys. And if you guys want to trade, you know, SQQQ, which pretty much is the same thing as TVIX, it goes up in price when the markets are selling off, but it is a little bit cheaper in terms of the dollar value. So this is another one that you could trade if you do have a smaller account, if you want to play with, you know, a cheaper, quote unquote, cheaper, uh, you know, ETF by dollar value. So SQQQ, guys, TQQQ, TVIX, just like every single day, these are the three main market ETFs that I'm watching. And of course, the inverse ETFs. Uh, and, you know, I'm going to be trading large cap stocks if we do see a bounce back tomorrow in the overall market. Facebook actually has been playing pretty well over the past couple of days. So keep an eye on Facebook right now. It's right by this 180 simple moving average resistance on the 180 chart. So if we do break above here, guys, Obviously, that's going to be a very good sign for Facebook, but, you know, keep an eye on these tech stocks, these large cap stocks that have been moving, uh, you know, pretty, pretty, uh, yeah, they've been selling off pretty heavily, right? And, you know, they could play as bounce back plays if the markets have a 500 point green day tomorrow, right? Instead of a 500 point red day like we've been having in the Dow, you know, 50 point red day in the S&P, 150 in the NASDAQ. What if we had one of those in the green, right? What if we went up 150 green on the NASDAQ, 50 green on the S&P, you know, five, six, 700 green in the Dow? These are going to be good scenarios to play large cap stocks like Apple, Facebook, Microsoft on the bounce back. So this is it for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If it's a little bit longer, if you guys stuck this long, drop a comment. Let me know. Say uh, just say, let me, let me think, say something. If you stayed this long, guys, I really want to, I'm curious to see if people actually stay this far into my videos. Please leave a comment and say, I stayed or something like that. Let me know. I would love to know. I'll catch you guys in the next video. I hope you're all having a great day, great trading week. I'll catch you guys in the morning in the group chat. Peace out.